We're back with another VOD review, this time with a different twist. Today, Maro will be breaking down gameplay from a challenger rated Fire Mage and giving their RM Pally some tips on how to win an insanely difficult matchup. Then, as a comparison, Maro will be breaking down some gameplay from Hansel, one of the best Fire Mages of all time, to see how a rank 1 Fire Mage navigates the same comp. If you want to see more videos just like this, be sure to check out skillcap.com, where you can find hundreds of VOD reviews from rank 1 players just like Maro. These guides have already helped players just like you hit their rating goals, including this hunter who went up 400 rating after Big Mechs reviewed their VODs. So if you want to learn all the secrets to start climbing fast in Season 2, be sure to check out skillcap.com after this and learn more about our 400 rating gain guarantee. Check out the links below after the video to get started. Anyway, let's dive in. Hey guys, Mauro here with a new video. And in this video we're going to be looking at a 1600 <clears throat> firearm parlor against uh, Turbo Game. Um, this is from a Skillcap subscriber and we're gonna be looking at the game and we're gonna analyze stuff and we're gonna look at what they could have done better and what they can improve on. Um, they're playing Subfire Impala and they're facing a disc turbo with a Fury Warrior. Um, just before we get into the game, some general stuff that I think is worth to mention. Um, first of all, I think when you're playing uh, Impala compared to like an RMP or something, um, something that's really <clears throat> important to to kind of keep in mind and that you need to do is that every time your Pala has um, hot and blind ready and he can CC, you should try and let him CC on his own kind of and just try to follow up. Um, and uh, the reason why we want to do that is, uh, is simply because um, when you're playing with a priest and stuff, there's not much CC coming from your healer. And you're gonna have to CC on your own all the time. And the rogue is kind of like when he plays sub, he's gonna have to set up the whole go. He's gonna have to stun the healer into CC. He's gonna have to do everything basically. Um, whereas when you have a parlor, he can do stuff on his own. He can go in. He can hot. He can blind. Um, and you should try and try and abuse that you can do that because that way the rogue doesn't have to double step for the go. He doesn't have to worry so much about CCing. He can kidney potentially kidney kill target. Have a one second longer stun. Um, so yeah, these kind of things, uh, they do matter a bit, and that's something we're going to be looking out as well, uh, looking out for in this game as well, um, as well as some other things, obviously. Alright, let's look at the opener. The opener, the mage is going for a DB. Um, he doesn't follow up with anything. The main reason why he doesn't is because the warrior is free, and they also don't really see the priest at the same time, they kind of just wait. Um, so there's probably like a small miscommunication on their part where they don't really, where they're not really on the same page. Um, and they're all a bit delayed. Um, they end up getting a wall from this. Didn't get any trinkets. Was delayed peers from combusting. Um, all in all, it's not like a horrible opener, but they probably could have done it a little better. I also think that the mage should have probably DB'd the warrior into sheep if the healer is going to get blinded. Um, but I think they just kind of they kind of just went on the same page and they're all not. Like they didn't really know who's gonna CC who, um, because if you want to do it perfect, you would have to like um, DB the warrior into sheep, blind the priest, and then stun the shaman at the same time. Or if you want to do it another way, you can also DB the shaman so he doesn't ground or shear, and then you can uh, cheap route the warrior into sheep. But you definitely need to do something with the warrior. Maybe the parlor could also hot him or blind him. Um, just like a couple of options that of something they could have done here to make it a little bit cleaner. Um, let's look at defensive gameplay. Um, okay, so <clears throat> after the go, they're obviously all DR'd. There's not much the mage can do right now. The shaman is sheep DR, the boy is sheep DR, so that's kind of fine. I think the better play here, instead of getting kicked, would have been to instantly react by pressing all the time and blinking behind the pillar and just lining some purges. Um, potentially even using greater invis for the wall. Um, the kick is kind of what makes this a little bit awkward because he gets kicked and then he's kind of just sitting there and waiting. Um, so when you're in this situation, try and watch out to not get kicked so much on arcade in between the goals, especially when they're about to pop. Like what you want to do instead is you want to alter time, blink behind a pillar. When the alter time is over, you want to cast like a ring of frost on your on yourself. It's on CD for him now, but in general, or you want to cast a fire spell, maybe get kicked, then cast a poly. Um, also potentially try and fake a little bit, um, all these like small things. Um, Alright, what happens now is he gets bopped, because he didn't really react good, so the Pala's gonna have to actually trinket, sack and bop. Um, 
It's not the end of the world, but it's not that good because there was no real need for that. They could have lived without doing this pop. Um, the mage could have kind of lived on its own. Um, then he lands a random sheep on the priest that doesn't like they don't build on that. They don't do anything. There's no stuns. The rogue also gets feared late into the go, but at that point he, the mage already swapped the sheep to the shaman. Um, which is kind of a weird play, like this is not a very good sheep swap. The sheep on the shaman is completely fine, the sheep on the priest is not good, because now he's deered. And the pilot doesn't have blind, the rogue doesn't have blind. So right now there's no CC school to CC the healer with. Right now there's no way to CC him, you can stun him into nothing, that's the only way. Um, so the sheeps on shaman actually were like okay in the end, they didn't really matter. Um, this DB is something I also don't really like because there's no reason to do it. You still have all the time. You can kind of just line. Um, also, you're not ready to do a go. Then they end up kidding the priest, but they can't go yet um, because it's Dia. So this was just really, really like not well coordinated at all because the the Dias were just not ready yet. They could have done everything they've done now. Could have been done just three seconds later, and it could have worked out. Um, and since they were not like 1 HP, there was no need to panic in that scenario either. They had CDs, they were also high HP, aside from having CDs as well. Um, so this was not necessary to make this go so so stressful and make it, <coughs> make it so difficult for themselves. Let's see what happens next. Here he trades his altar time in between the ghosts, this was a good altar time. Um, in general this is what you want to do, you come out of a go, even though they failed to go, but it's still a go in a way because they still stunned someone, so it's still a go. Um, and after the go, he you try to trade your altar time early on. Um, all right, now we're at a point where the deer is about to fall off. They can do something. Just to quickly um, say what I think should be done here. I think what should be done. They missed a kick on the shaman just now, which is a bit sketchy because he has precock for four seconds. But in my opinion, what the perfect goal would be here is to um, for the parlor to go towards the priest or run run at the priest, hot shim. He's not being trained either, so he can freely do whatever he wants, hot shim. The rogue will stun the warrior, you can DB and ring at the same time, and you can get like a kinda easy 3v1 go on the shaman without much risk. The only risk in that would be that the Hodge gets grounded, which he would try to play around. Um, and that's kind of like the only risk. Um, so let's see what they do. Okay, so first of all, he does a he sheeps the warrior, which kinda makes the go awkward already because now he just gets dispelled, of course, and now he's deared. Um, and now it's gonna be awkward. Then he also gets kicked, so he can't dispel the hex from the parlor, which makes it even more awkward. This is a good DB. Uh, yeah, so like a lot of stuff went went, went wrong here. So, um, like I said, first of all, the sheep is really good. Then he then you he does the DB, which I think is not bad. Um, but then the priest also kind of gets stunned like slightly behind the pillar, so you can't really reach, and just makes the whole go really really awkward. And they just yeah, it, it's just like just like a little bit awkward. I almost want to say it's also a little bit unlucky what happened here that the priest is kind of like one yard out of line. Um, but that's also kind of like, in the, in the perfect world, he wouldn't have blinked where he blinked. He would have actually blinked towards, um, if we look at the, like, we see where, this, where it's paused now, towards the left from this. Like, where the rogue is standing right now, towards that direction, would have been way better, because then he could have followed up the sheep, uh, like, followed up with the sheep on the priest, and the ring could have still been casted, because there was enough time, in theory. Um, Alright, let's see what they do in between the goals again. I mean, the main loose condition that you guys can already see is obviously the palace mana. Um, I think if you kite well and you trade defensives good in between the goes, um, even with a paladin that's kind of known to be bad right now in this meta, but I still think you can live kind of long because palace also kind of good into these like double melee comms. Your bobs are really good, freedoms are really good, and you have kind of good CDs to trade. Um, so this is kind of like. Like, this is kind of your main loose condition, it's kind of be mana. Um, then what happens here? He... 
stuns the priest. I'm actually gonna go back a sec quick because we don't want to see. Okay, so the priest gets gouged into a duel. That gouge is obviously not good because now he's sheep there in between the ghosts and I mean they have a blind ready from the parlor so it's maybe maybe not that bad but it's also not really needed to do a gouge there. Um, then the priest gets stunned. I believe it's Dia. So it's a Dia stun follow up. Then they followed up with a Dia sheep. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so you, you can you can see what the issue is here. I mean, they actually end up forcing a lot of CDs. Um, the main reason they even force CDs here, though, is simply because the mage randomly procs the hypothermia into another one while having PI up that he dispelled. Um, so something they're doing good here is that they're communicating, or I assume they're communicating, that the mage is doing big damage. Um, and they're reacting by blinding the priest. Um, so that's a good thing, because it they actually end up forcing two trinkets, which is an overlap. The shaman didn't have to drink it here, or the priest didn't have to drink it. Either one would have been fine. Um, just to quickly give my opinion on that as well, uh, the better thing would have been for the shaman to drink it here, uh, drink it wall, because there was no follow-up on the priest. The priest is full DR, um, so that's like a perfect scenario kind of thing where it would be better for the shaman to drink it. Um, but the enemy, the enemy team ends up overlapping and the priest actually ends up swapping late into the go as well. Which I don't necessarily think was needed, but it's like understandable, he was a little bit low. Um, this gouge is really bad obviously, this is another thing where they kind of make it harder for themselves by doing these DI gouges. Um, it makes it really awkward to do another go because it just delays it even longer. Um, so yeah. But they're actually ending up trying to go on the priest, so I guess in that sense it's not that bad because they wanted to go on the priest. The go is not good enough though, to be honest. The go is like too awkward. This is a go where if they want to go priest, sure, but they need to they need to involve the paladin into the go. The paladin has a hot ready, he has a blind ready. He needs to be involved in the go. It can't be a mage just going in, debing two people. Um, hoping to magically land some follow-ups to see then people have dots so the db maybe even breaks then you get stopped all these things that just happen now um could have been avoided if they just do it a little bit different either the rogue has to cover or the paladin has to cover and i think it can just be the paladin because he has stuff ready um so yeah let's see what they do now um the turn to swap back to the shaman Try to land a random sheep here, actually not that bad because he got the death and he got the shear. Could potentially land it, his altar time is also gonna run back in a sec. Um, and he actually lands it. Um, and this is kind of a good kill, kill opportunity to be honest. Um, the main issue here is that they again don't really follow up to CC with anything. Um, if you look at what happened is that the priest got sheep out of nothing, uh, it was a good sheep. Then the shaman got stunned a little bit late, but that was at this point it was also still okay. Um, but then the, the other thing kind of happened that I said before, where the parlor has CC ready as well and he doesn't get involved in the go. Like if you look at, if you go back 10 seconds and you look at what happened here, the parlor has a hot ready and has a blind ready. Like he can do stuff, he can hot the warrior, he, the warrior could maybe get chinked right now if the rogue has dance ready right now, but you, they need to try and like abuse the paladin a little bit more here. Um, because what happens here, kind of obvious, the warrior is free, he has storm bolt ready, he just storm the rogue, the stun chain ends. Um, then the shaman just gets to like free wall pretty much. The priest actually pierces overlap as well, they follow up late on the priest with a hot into blind. But there was even a gap as well. Um, so there's like a lot of like mini gaps that are happening that are making it a bit awkward and making it a bit too easy for the team. Um, then what we see is like a late combust into the go. I don't necessarily think this is a good combust. Um, like a lot of these plays are, they're looking a lot of like, they're looking kind of like panicky. It looks like they're, they're doing these things like as if they were like 1% HP. But if you just freeze from this moment and you just pause the game at this point, like this game is looking good. They have CC ready soon, like Diaz ready. They have two people that both don't have a trinket. There's no Pierce on the priest. 
There's no wall on the shaman, so even if you leave a gap later in the stun chain or something, it's not the end of the world. The only one with a trinket is the warrior. Um, he doesn't have fear ready though for another 20, he has storm ready soon. Like, this is not a bad game, and it just feels like they're going a bit too soon sometimes, and um, that makes it a little bit awkward. Like here as well, they actually end up landing a random sheep, even though there's like stops available, death is available, and kick is available, but it's okay. I mean, they land a random sheep, it's not bad. Thank you, Aura Mastery for the Pala. Still could have been deft, of course, but it's not that bad. And then they trade a block in between the goals, which is fine, I guess. <clears throat> like, now comes a point where he should alter, which he does, this is good. Um, something like as a quick tip as well for anyone that plays mage out there as well. Um, in between these goals, you should try and look to press spells sometimes, because he's sitting on 100% mana. Um, so you can afford to press spells he once or twice, maybe get a powered fortitude off. Um, on a shaman or an earth shield, and if he doesn't have it for the go, it could actually end up being very relevant and could actually like end up winning you the game, kind of because he has less HP. It's gonna be kind of like a close scenario. Um, and now it's kind of like, like this is where this is where the game like becomes bad after the block. They get to pop. Um, they also do this go again a little bit too soon, but I don't blame them because now they're like kind of dying. And uh, the mage ends up just dying to the shaman's shaman's uh, sentence pop. Um, to quickly go over this game, what I think went wrong is there's two two major issues. Is the, or the two biggest issues is obviously follow up CC wasn't very good. They always had small gaps and they always couldn't really follow up. And I think the main issue with this game was that the paladin wasn't involved at all into the goals. He has hot now as well in the end. Um, could technically hodge the warrior while the priest is stunned, that way the warriors would have to drink it. Like the game is 4 minutes, the warrior didn't have to drink it once I believe. Um, and it's not even that he didn't want to drink it, it just feels like he didn't have to. And that's kind of why the game went as bad as it went. Um, I think if you just keep doing clean goals and you do keep doing clean setups, um, they probably would have won that game, they also had a good kill window in the last one and a half minutes but just didn't really manage to do one good call where they got good cross CC and everyone was covered um, and it kind of just led to to them not not really not really getting a kill here. In this video we're going to be looking at a RMP game from Hansol, a multi rank one mage from North America um, and they're playing in a, a game of RMP, sub RMP into a disc Fury Turbo Cleave. Um, we're gonna be looking at some of their setups, we're gonna be looking at how they manage to do the goals and how they manage to land CC and especially um, how they manage to land follow-up CC and what follow-up CC they're gonna be playing around. Um, so something to keep in mind here is that the biggest issue that they're gonna have I think to win or like the biggest the biggest uh, like the hardest thing about this matchup is actually landing good cross, con cross crowd control because the priest fear is somewhat ineffective because the warrior might be playing the immunity berserker rage for his entire team um, and the shaman of free has a tremor totem so the priest fear is kind of ineffective so most of the CC is going to be going to have to be done by the rogue and obviously by the mage but the mage is going to be the main target so he's not going to be able to do um, whatever he wants either, so he's gonna have to play around kicks and groundings and all these things a lot. Um, so let's see how they manage that. <clears throat> Alright, looking at the opener, they sap the shaman, deep the warrior. They actually leave a small gap here, so this was a little bit risky. The warrior could have pre-blade stomped here. Um, he doesn't do it though. Okay, so then they, okay, they, they follow up the sap on the shaman with the fear. And they end up they follow up the chief from the priest with the ring and they end up going on the warrior the first go. Which instantly forces Enrage region. Um, then they still have the Stundia so on the sh Stundia available on the Shaman. The priest is obviously Dia from Sun, so he can't be swapped to. Um, whereas the Shaman can be swapped to, and that's what they're doing with the, the leftover damage from Combust, um, as well as a Dia sheep on the priest. Which ends up getting them um, at least burrow. So in the opener they managed to force Enrage region from the warrior and a burrow from the shaman. Um, 
trading. I mean, some offenses, but uh, they didn't really. There was nothing really that was wasted or anything like that. Um, let's see what they do in between the goals, because it's also kind of interesting to see what people do. Um, because this is the second part of the game, this is the second part of the matchup. Obviously, the first obstacle is trying to land a kill, the second one is trying to live in between the goals. Um, there's a couple ways of living good in between the goals. The first one is um, seeing the people. Like, for example, the guy you're going on um, can be polyed in between the goals um, because you're not gonna you're not gonna see him on the next goal. So putting him on a uh, polymorph dia wouldn't be wouldn't be bad. Um, so that way you would reduce the damage on you by a lot, and that way you could kind of live through the damage without you know your priest having to struggle to heal so much. The other way is kiting a lot. Um, the issue with kiting a lot, if you're gonna for example, a mage could also blink behind the priest pillar right now and try to LOS there and try to avoid damage. The issue with that is that, first of all, they're instantly going to turn on a rogue if they're like a good turbo cleave and a good melee cleave in general. And the second issue with that is that um, it's really hard for a mage to get back to the enemy priest to CC if you're doing that. Um, that's kind of the, the disadvantage or the problem with doing that. So if you would kite behind the priest pillar or something, then you would kind of end up um, putting yourself in a bad position for the next go unless you're having like two blinks ready or something. Um, so what they do is they stay in, they actually use the sheep to <clears throat> they actually use the sheep here to to do a go on the warrior, so they sheep the shaman, blind the priest, the priest unfortunately deaths the polymorph. Um so they have to follow up with a kidney into into a sheep, um which means the shaman is kind of free, like he he's off the like the second the sheep swaps, obviously he's not in CC anymore. So what they do instead is that they Fear the warrior and they go on the shaman again. I mean, this is a good call at this point because the warrior probably wouldn't have died after the priest blinded the death the blind, and the go would have been a little bit awkward because the second he would have to swap the sheep to the to the priest, the the shaman would be out of the sheep and he would be free to peel, he would be free to ground, he would be free to do stuff. Um, so this was probably the correct call in that moment. Um, then you see what I mean in between the goals. He's trying to sheep up the warrior as much as possible, try to reduce damage on himself. Um, basically, as long as there's only one DPS on you and your priest, your, your healer in general isn't Oom, it should be kind of easy easy to heal. Um, so that's why doing the sheeps on, on one of the DPS can be really, really good in between the goals. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what they do next. They start the next go with a kidney on priest, followed up by a polymorph. The shaman gets covered by a cheap shot into a ring of frost that doesn't land, sadly. I think there was just too little time because they're orcs, so you have a, like you have very little time to actually land the CC trains. Um, so there was like a little bit too late. I actually think if that didn't happen, they would have probably killed the warrior in the stun already. Um, or like the, one of them would have had to trinket and like react to it. That way the warrior made it out of the stun without trinketing. Um, but he actually ends up just dying to PvE damage in the end. Let's look at the end again. Like if you just pause the game from... Let's just pause the game in a second. From the point I mean. Uh, let's pause here. Like if the shaman wouldn't be able to get the ground off after the CC. Um, and he didn't do the Ring of Fire first, I think it would have been an instant trinket. Um, that way the warrior at least lived through the stuns, because you can see the mage basically didn't do his damage yet, because the, there's a ground up. Um, so the only damage he provided so far is the Ring of Fire, um, which takes for a lot as well, don't get me wrong. But it's not that big. Um, then he kind of just ends up dying a bit pre in the end. Um, but something you could see this game is that every goal they were doing, there was always like a plan in the back of the heads on who's gonna CC who. They were probably talking good about it as well. And they were doing like pretty much every go, they were also at least trying to always do good follow ups. Always try to follow up with a fear, follow up with a deer sheep, follow up with the blind, follow up with like a deer, st like a stun. All these kind of things matter a lot. And even though they kind of won pre CDC a little bit, um, it, it all kind of like it. 
it, it did like it made sense a little bit why they won here because even though they didn't force trinkets yet, they did force Enrage region, they forced wall, they forced burrow in the start from the shaman, they forced PS from the priest. I think both PS's actually. Um, so they kind of went through all these like damage reduction CDs. So the this, the only thing that was still there was trinkets, but trinkets alone won't really save you, um, except maybe the priest trinket here. So the other team kind of misread the situation, um, but overall this was a this was a really well played game by the RMP. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed another VOD review. Did you like the comparison between Challenger and Rank 1 gameplay? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we want to tell you more about Skillcap.com. We work with the best players in WoW to produce hundreds of website exclusive guides. And now with the Skillcap membership, you can even get personal support from Rank 1 players in our Ask a Pro forum on Discord. Every season, we help players just like you hit their rating goals from Rival all the way to Rank 1. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started on your next PvP journey, which includes a rank up guarantee as long as you use the videos on our website. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this one. We wish you the best of luck on your rating grind. Thanks for watching. See you soon.